Thank you for joining us again for part four of installing and configuring Windows Server 2016. In this episode, we'll be using the DC1 and the PFSense virtual machine. From the DC1 virtual machine, right click on Open Network and Sharing Center. Click on your local network connection. If you recall in episode three, I had a diagram showing the IP address that we would be assigning to the virtual machines. We're going to go ahead and assign that address. The first thing I'm going to do is turn off IP version 6 by unchecking it. Click on Internet Protocol version 4, then click Properties. Click Use the following IP address. For this one, we're going to be using 172.16.0.1. I'm sorry, 0.2. Our subnet mask is going to be 255.255.255.0. Our default gateway will be 172.16.0.1. For the preferred DNS server, enter 172.16.0.1. For the alternate DNS server, enter 208.67.222.222. Click OK. Click close, click close. Now let's go back to server manager, which opens by default when you first boot the computer. Let's click on local server. Then let's click manage, add roles and features. I'm gonna make the VM full screen. So let's go to view full screen, click next. This is a role based feature. So let's go ahead and click next. Click next because we've selected the server we want. Click Active Directory Domain Services. Click Add Features. Click Next. Click Next. Click Next. And click Install. Here you will see a notification that post deployment configuration is required. In previous versions of Windows, you would click start and type DC promo. Doing this now results in a command or an error saying that the Active Directory Domain Service Installation Wizard is relocated in Server Manager. So from Server Manager, we need to click promote the server to a domain controller. We're adding a domain controller to a new forest. So you've got three options. Add a domain controller to an existing domain. That would be if you're adding multiple domain controllers. Add a new domain to an existing forest. But we're creating a whole new forest. We have nothing else to work with. So we're just going to call this lab.local. We're going to bring the forest functional level to Windows Server 2016. We're not going to be using any older operating systems, so there's no reason to change this to an older version. Here you'll type your directory service restore mode password. Click next. Click next. We can leave the default as lab. It is suggested that you have another volume for the data paths for the NTDS and SysVol folder, but for this lab, we're going to leave them in the default of C Windows. Okay, let's go ahead and click install. Okay. 
So currently the wizard is installing the components for Active Directory and all the management tools. It's setting up DNS, verifying everything's working. And it says it was successfully configured and it's giving us a notification that's being rebooted. So here in just a minute, our machine will reboot. So after a couple of minutes, you'll be back to the login screen. Now this admin password is the account that you created earlier. And by default, it automatically logs you in. So the password is actually blank right now uh, because we didn't set it. So we're going to need to go ahead and do that. Press Control Alt Insert, click Change Password. Old password is blank. Create to a new password and hit Enter. So we've changed our password. All right, so let's go ahead and type in users and computers. Click on lab.local, click users, and the built-in administrator account. Let's check that out real quick. We can see that it's not locked, uh, it's not disabled. Let's go ahead and reset it so we make sure we know what it is. And uncheck user must change password because we don't really want to do that. All right, so we've changed our domain administrator password. All right, so now let's take a look at properties on here again. So it set our preferred DNS to the local host, which is good. I changed it to an external DNS earlier so it would validate that lab.local was a non-existent domain. The next thing we can do is click on start and type in DNS. Double click on the server name, click forward lookup zones, and under here you can see lab.local and within that you will see our domain controller host which I should have actually renamed it to DC1. So now you've got an odd name. You'll just have to keep up with it. It's not really a problem. Let's go ahead and look at the properties for our DNS server. So for forwarders, we have our lab router and we have open DNS. If you remember, we put that in there earlier and it just migrated that to a forwarder. So what that means instead of the computer looking at the local DNS, the 127, the loopback address, it's going to forward DNS request to our router and to OpenDNS for external queries such as google.com or uh, walmart.com, that type of thing. All right, so we've set up DNS, we've set up Active Directory, very basic. Let's look at our group policy. Under domain, we have our lab, our default domain policy. We can see that it's created uh, all the settings here. So our password, it has to be at least seven characters and it must meet complexity. So if you had trouble changing your password just a minute ago, that's the reason why. If you got a message saying it doesn't uh, match, meet the complexity requirements. 
right, so let's see if we can rename this domain controller. Let's go ahead and click Start and click Control Panel. And from here, let's click on System and click Change Settings by Computer Name, Domain, and Work Group. And let's click Change. You receive a message that domain controllers cannot be moved from one domain to another. They must first be demoted. Okay. Used to, you could not rename domain controllers, but we received a message saying that it would just be temporarily unavailable. Let's go ahead and rename it to DC1. That makes it a little bit easier for us to keep up with things. All right, so let's go ahead and click OK, click Close. Let's go ahead and restart now. Alright, so our domain controller is restarted. Let's do control insert and let's log in as the admin. We're all logged in. Let's go ahead and pull up our Active Directory users and computers again. So under domain controllers, we see DC1. That's great. Let's go back and let's pull up our DNS to see if it's been updated. It says DC1, we have forward lookup zones, lab.local, and we do see DC1. We also have this old static record. We can go ahead and delete that just to clean it up a bit. And so now we've got a functioning domain. We can use the DNS server and get external resolves. We've got our group policy set up. So let's go ahead and let's turn this file server on and get started with Windows File Services in Episode 5. Thanks for watching.